In the middle of nowhere, we found a Studebaker hidden in a shipping container for the last 30 years. And while we were cleaning it after we pulled the seats out, first we found a massive hornet's nest. Then we found not only one, but two remnants of what used to live in this car, along with the biggest mouse nest we've ever found. Wow. Oh my God. And then we found the main culprit. We caught one alive bugger. So we started off our day following Matt with the Viper, who seems to find us all of these really cool cars down in the middle of nowhere. And as we pulled up, we were able to finally see this beauty of a Studebaker that we were hearing about. And I can't believe it was just sitting inside of a shipping container. But when we hopped out of the truck, first we were greeted by some cute pups. Hey, how's it going? Hi, guys. And then we were introduced to Chuck, who's the owner of this vehicle, and he gave us a ton of backstory on it. And I also want to mention that you should watch all the way through the video because we got his reaction at the end and it was very emotional. So you definitely don't want to miss that. How long has it been in there for? 32 years it's been sitting there. My next question is, how did you get it in there? Oh, I didn't put it in, he did. Oh, okay, gotcha. It was in the barn. Oh, okay, gotcha. And so he needed to clear the space in the barn, so he put it in the trailer. Okay. RJ, check out this picture. Holy smokes. That's that cool? Just, that was one. That's you in there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Look at the... Uh, when you were younger than me, yeah. that I am now, way younger. Well, I was 51, 52. In and I'm 64. Isn't that crazy? Man, the fender mirrors are... I've only seen those on Japanese cars. See, I had a 55 President. That was a V8. This is a champion, six owner. Okay. So I got the five head six in, at home in the garage ready to go in it's all wired you know it, it would run just exactly where it's sitting right so to start getting it out first chuck had to go grab his skid loader there were two chucks there and he was able to level out the ground so we could back our trailer right up to the unit and it was time for this studebaker to see the light of day for the first time in 30 years and somehow i turned the camera at the right time and you could see how happy chuck was wow that's a sharp car that white paint on there is so cool like I remember. <laughs> you got room in here to get in and clean. You just nice. stick Brent in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and thankfully oh the window was up. What do you think? I don't believe it. You excited? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I was apprehensive before today, and then today I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Now, we didn't want to waste any time, so as soon as we got back to the shop, we got straight to work. And while looking over the car, you could see it's in desperate need of a detail. And we actually did a first where we went and we picked up some new tires and we replaced them on the car. But we made a very big mistake, which you guys are going to have to keep watching to see because it's a bad one. But I want to hop into the question of the video, so leave your answers in the comments below. As we were leaving where the car was, Chuck said one more thing that really resonated with us. And he said that he enjoyed this car with his parents when they were still alive. What do you remember your parents? parents driving when you were younger. For me, I always remember my dad having a Chevy Avalanche and taking my sister and I to school. And there's just a very specific memory I have with that car. But what do you guys remember your parents driving? Leave it in the comments below. And also, if you guys like the content we make, all I ask is that you like the video because it helps us get it out to more people. Let's see if we can get 7,000 likes on this video. So before even touching the exterior, this car was the worst smelling car that we've ever worked on. I couldn't even get anywhere near it without gagging. And we knew that it was from mice, so we had to get the interior stripped down first. That way we could start getting rid of some of that smell before actually working on the outside. What is this? Is this a cabin air filter? What's an air radiator, dude. Air radiator? A radiator. What's a radiator? Why is it in the car? I don't know, dude. I didn't build the seat right there. So we pulled out the front seat and first thing we noticed is this massive hornet's nest which looks like it was then overtaken by some mice here and there. But I mean, that thing is huge. And then after we pulled the seat out, we saw what looks to be like a radiator that's inside the car. Uh, I thought that it was just sitting there, like maybe it was an extra part, but this is mounted to the car and I don't understand how this would work. So if anyone knows why the radiator would be inside the car, drop a comment, let us know what kind of old fangled. Dude, it's a heated seat. Dude, it might be a heated oh. seat. 
And now a word from our sponsors. Hey guys, I recently Googled my own name, email, and phone number and found so much of my own personal information on people's search sites. And these data brokers are profiting from our information and it's causing us to get unwanted calls, emails, and more. And that's why I'm so excited to announce the sponsor of this video because I've been using Aura to scrub the internet clean of my personal information. Aura is an all-in-one solution to help protect your online privacy and identity. Aura identifies data brokers exposing your information and submits opt-out requests on your behalf. They also remove you from junk mail and telemarketing lists that you don't want to be on. Aura also monitors your emails and passwords for data breaches and exposures on the dark web. And I even found that my email was part of a breach and Aura provided recommendations on securing all of my accounts. Aura's app includes a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and malware protection. It's your one-stop shop for all your internet safety needs. So do yourself a favor and follow the link in our description to get a two-week free trial to discover just how much of your private information is exposed on the internet that you really don't want to be there. Visit aura.com slash wddetailing or scan the QR code on the screen to start your free trial. Keeping your online information private can be messy business, so let Aura scrub the internet of your personal information today. Thank you Aura again for sponsoring this video. I'm so glad I was able to use you guys and get my stuff off the internet. But with that being said, let's hop back into the detail. Mike, I hear there's mice skeletons. Do you want to pick them up? No, they're scary. Get it. Uh -uh. Get it. No. Pick it up, dude. Where is it? It's right there in front of you. See that? This one was sitting right by my leg. Look at that thing, dude. I can't see it. Bro. Look on oh, the seatbelt. Wow. This? This thing's annihilating. Wow. That was a Where's the other one? Mouse. The other one's right here. <sighs> This is more complete. Super gross. <laughs> more complete. Oh wow. I think like half of it's still down in there. I think I broke it in half. Hold on, let me see if I can get this out. <laughs> Yuck. Oh yeah. Same thing. But worse? Uh, maybe, actually yeah, I think it's worse than the other one. Dude, that's insane. <sighs> wow. Wow. Ugh. Oh my god. Do not put that face down on my floor. <laughs> I've seen a lot of rats nests in cars before under seats. That's by far the worst. So by this point, we decided to start with the interior first to at least get to the pre-treatment of the carpet so we could let that sit for a day or two before we started actually working on the inside. So as you can see, the seatbelts were completely covered in mouse droppings. So we took them outside and we pressure washed them out and it was so satisfying watching all of that stuff come out.
and check out everything that we vacuumed up. That is a lot of mouse nest. I don't even know where the mice get all of this from. But anyways, we were finally able to put a pre-treat into the carpet and let that sit over the course of the next two days. And that helped a ton with getting rid of the odor. But I did recommend to Chuck that he should replace the carpet since they've been sitting so long with all these mouse droppings and urine in them. But he's focused on getting this car running before anything. So he said he's focusing on that first and then maybe doing other stuff in the future. And I wanna point out, if you look in the trunk here, all of the brown stuff is mouse droppings. So when we start cleaning it out and pressure washing it, you're gonna see all of it go away. And it's so satisfying watching it drain through that hole. And now with the majority of the mouse remnants eradicated, it's finally time to move on to the exterior where we started with the engine bay. And I wanna ask you guys, if you guys had this car, what engine would you put inside of it? Check out what we found behind door number two. I think the Hornets really liked the color of this car. So in 1955, obviously, most cars didn't have air conditioning. And Brent asked me what the vents on the side of the car did. And I said, well, there's a lever inside. And if you pop it open, it allows airflow through that. There's a, a filter, and then you get cold air or you get air to your legs underneath the car. Pretty cool. I found it really cool that the gas door opened upwards on this car, but I have a question for you guys and I wanna see how many of you know the answer to it. Do you know why this gas cap has a lock on it for a key? If you do, leave a comment below.
At this point, we started having some conversations I figured you guys might like to listen to. What's your biggest flaw? Mike, you go first. My height. No. The personality flaw. flaws. My flaw? Yes. Uh, I hate that I'm right all the time and people get mad about it. <laughs> You're playing this wrong. This is the wrong way. <laughs> Always being right. That's a flaw. I, I mean, it's a curse of mine, dude. Like a big flaw of my brother's is always thinking he's right. <laughs> oh, he's got the same problems with orange <laughs> The best part about cars is like, you don't have to be a car person to love cars. Like, your sister, you know, like, she's not a car girl. Uh, my mom, like, you know, the first car she bought out of high school was a Fiero, brand new Fiero. It was manual. And she had to have my grandfather drive it home because she couldn't drive stick. And so my grandfather taught her how to drive stick and my mom taught me how to drive stick, so like I learned. You my, taught me how to drive stick. And I taught, so by proxy, my grandfather taught you how to drive stick. You know. Yeah. That's freaking. I mean, you, you don't really like, like realize the uh, lineage of like car. I guess a lot of people identify with their cars or the cars that they really enjoy. Yeah. I remember even like girls in high school, like they would get their first car and they would name it. Oh yeah. These are, yeah. And, like, oh, they all did. It. They I, all did. I don't think I named my car, but like people. And I think what it is, it signifies like freedom. You know, like a car like this, and the old man that you know owned it, when you stand there watching it get pulled out, you could see him reliving moments in his life that he wouldn't relive without seeing the car. Like it, it brings back. What do, you, what do you think you would do? If, what was your first car? A Subaru. I had a WX. <clears throat> what do you think oh, you would yeah. do if you like saw that car again? I would have, that thing's classed out. Wherever it is, it's yeah, either dead or, <laughs> or dying. Uh, so, I mean, but there's a part of me, and I don't even like Supers anymore, but there's a part of me that wants another 2004 WRX. Not because, uh, you know, my car is better, faster, more technology, everything, but it's like, I want to experience, I want to feel what it felt like to have it in my garage and still have to wait another month to get my driving license. Like, I want to feel that excitement again. I want to smell the exhaust fumes. I want to hear a great exhaust. And, to have the turbo timer, you know, I, I want to remember what it felt like in that moment. Mine was a 2004 Mercury Sable that Mike put the sound system in. Oh, Ooh, dude. We. Now that's an enthusiast call. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it is. And then after that great conversation, we started taking the wheels off because we were going to replace the tires for the gentleman who owned the car. And that's when things took a turn for the worse. All right, guys. Well, I made a major mistake yesterday. As you can see, this is the drum brake hat that goes over the, the brakes uh, and connects to the studs, and this is the actual hub that's connected to the axle. Uh, I didn't realize that on the left side of Studebakers, they are regular threads, and on the right side, they are reverse threads. So, being a complete moron, I decided to take my impact driver and proceed to basically snap off one of the, uh, the studs that obviously holds a wheel on. So I snap one of them, I go, what the heck's going on? I can't believe it's seized like that, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, it says L on the top of the stud, and I'm just too stupid to, to take a moment to figure out what's going on. So anyways, I snap one, then I snap another, and then out of frustration, I decided to just snap the others off, which is a complete bonehead mistake. And now we're left with a new drum brake that we have to get for the customer which we're gonna pay for, because this is my mistake. So we're gonna get him a new drum brake. This is seized on here. Now we have to figure out a way to punch out these studs. We've since grinded them off. We've hit them with hammers. We were basically smashing the metal flat and causing a flange on this side, so we couldn't actually give them the pop out. They are pressed in, they're not, I don't believe that they're uh, spline, splined or they're definitely not threaded. But, you know, in life, you make mistakes and uh, I'm definitely learning from this one. I called the customer, I owned up to the mistake, I told him exactly what I did and how stupid it was and how we're gonna fix it no matter what. And I don't care what I have to do, what I have to pay for, I made a mistake 
and I have to own up to it. More so a life lesson. I was pretty demeaned yesterday. I spent the whole day on this when it was supposed to just be take the wheels off and, and go get them replaced. So I'm a bit defeated, but at the same time, I'm going to make it right for this customer. Brent's in the same boat. If you make a mistake, you own up to it and you make it right. Also, the reason why there's no footage of any of this happening yesterday, of us grinding all this out, we wanted to put it on on camera, but I was so embarrassed that I said I didn't, I didn't want to show it. Um, so that's why there's no video of us making all these mistakes, which we should have, so that you guys could see that, um, you know, I'm never, I'm definitely not an expert, but more or less, I was so embarrassed that uh, we were having this issue that I made this mistake that I didn't want to film any of it. But if you guys have any idea how to get these studs out with the hub still being on here, please let me know in the comments or send us a DM or an email, because uh, I'm at a loss. And I gotta make this right one way or another. I don't care if we have to replace the whole rear axle of this of this car. I hope we don't have to, but uh, you live and learn and uh, you win and lose sometimes. And this was definitely a loss and a learning lesson. And uh, I don't know, but if any of you have any, any help uh, that you guys can send our way, it'd be really appreciated. So with all that being said, we were able to get all the other three wheels off once we figured that out. And we had the new tires on the rims with these brand new white walls that are beautiful to look at. So we threw them on the car and we took the protective coating off with some isopropyl alcohol, an SOS pad, and a towel. Now to finally address the carpet, cause boy, let me tell you, I still could not get near the car. It smelled so bad. It was reeking of mouse urine. We went ahead and used our pump sprayer with some carpet soap in it. We used our drill brush and we sucked it all away. And we did this twice, we only filmed it once, but again, it is just so gross. I highly recommended it to the owner to replace the carpeting. And off camera, once the car was completely dry, we ozoned it as well. I got all the dirty water we pulled out of the car. I just hope none of you are eating while watching this. Now for the seats, it's very clear this was a mouse highway, so they were probably getting their fecal matter on their feet and running along on the leather and you can see it starting to break up as soon as the APC touches it. So I'm gonna make sure to clean it multiple times, also with a steamer to sanitize it. And if you don't have a steamer, or if you're curious about any of the products you see us using, it's all in the description below.
All right, so at the beginning of this detail, we were pulling out the back, uh, back seat rest, and Brent said he saw a mouse, and I didn't see it, so I didn't believe him. I said, I didn't see anything, where is he, blah, blah, blah. And uh, anyways, I decided to go get some ethical mouse traps, set them up in the shop, just in case. That way they're not you know, chewing up wires on our cars. And all of a sudden, a moment ago, we heard a couple of squeaks, and sure enough, we got a new glass pet. You cute little guy. Danger, 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 danger. We're gonna go take him to the Metro Parks and we're gonna release him out there. That way he uh, can't make his way back inside this garage. So, oh, look, he's got poopies in there. Poopies. <laughs> what should we name him? Uh, Grover. Grover? Yeah, he looks like a Grover. All right, guys, you heard RJ, but I wanna know, what should this mouse be named? Now for the rest of the exterior, we were on a little bit of a time crunch because we wanted to get Chuck's reaction. We did a one-step polish on the paint and we touched up all the chrome and then did a couple minor things and this thing was good to go. And you guys will notice at the end that we put the last wheel in where it would sit normally just so we had the effect of the final product of the car. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and again, we have his reaction at the end so don't forget to watch that. Come on in. Well, wait. Hey, let me <laughs> take it all <laughs> Oh God. Look at that. Boy, you did that chrome. Yeah, we did all the chrome. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every every piece of chrome. It took quite some time. Uh, because there's obviously a lot on there. That looks better. <laughs> that chrome looks better than it did 30 years ago. <laughs> That's what we always shoot for, is better than when uh, oh the customer goodness. first got their car. But, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> Been a while since it looked like this, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I got. I got to take some pictures. I. I wish my wife was here. God. I. I wish. Uh, just, Oh, she, man. She's in, she's in there's no, she'll be out another week or two, I hope. Oh, well, we'll pray for her. Uh, when I heard that she was in the nursing home, I wished so much that we had finished a day earlier because I would have put it on the trailer and we would have taken it to, to show her uh, and give her a little bit of a, you know, a little bit more cheer. Oh, okay. But oh, I do have to show you the problem that we had, the oh. problem that I had. Every time, Every time I pull lug nuts off the left side of the car, <laughs> I always say, wait a minute, that should be left-hand thread. Yeah. And even at this age, you know, I still question why it's a right-hand thread. Right. <laughs> well, <clears throat> all right, so I'll pull the wheel and then, then you can give me your, give me the, the, bus, the ball button. 
Yeah. All right, so here's the, the problem that I had. I know I said I was gonna take these off and get your tires put on for you, but I made a mistake. So as you know, these are reverse threads or left-hand threads. And uh, as you can see, I, I sheared off all the studs. <laughs> so we have a new drum brake coming. Uh, we have new studs, oh. new lugs, new uh, spindle lock key. So we're gonna get it fixed. I can't go home today, but I'll go home soon. But oh, I, I, I just, just. <laughs> so if you guys want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And if you could drop a like if you enjoyed the video, it helps us reach more people and get more people to see some of this, these crazy cars that we pull out of barns. And uh, with all that being said, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. All right, guys, we're uh, we're here at the local park, the Metro Parks. Uh, we're gonna drop off Grover. I mean. I mean, what's you called him Gerald. No, you called him Gerald. I called. Him I didn't Grover. call him. Oh wait, yeah. maybe maybe you did call him I Grover. Did, I did. I did. All right. Let's see. You think he's gonna run right out or? Off you go, little man. I think he Ew, likes. It smells us. like crap. I don't think he go wants to go. Go, little buddy. Go, little buddy. Beep beep. No free ride. Get out. He doesn't want to go. Get out. Aww. He's really cute. You gotta see him from my angle. Oh. Don't come toward me. Whoa, look at him go. Pew, see you later.